Dr. Stella George is our next speaker. Um, uh, title From Admission to Discharge and Beyond, a Holistic Seven-Day Diabetes Inpatient Service. Stella, over to you. So I'm just going to go through really um, a very different sort of project from the previous two talks, and it's focused entirely on inpatient work. And we, re we were a very small team to begin with. This whole project started about two years or so ago. We're just about to finish the whole project. And the, the driver for change really was that it was myself and um, two diabetes specialist nurses doing the traditional reactive review of diabetes patients from referrals from all the teams around the hospitals. And we noticed that the referrals were varying quality and relevance despite the fact that we'd actually rolled out Think Glucose at that time. We then sat down and we thought, well, how are we going to do this better? We started targeting the higher risk areas like the renal unit and the ACU. But again, it really was, we felt as if we were just scratching the surface. We weren't really dealing with the majority of the problems out there that inpatients were encountering throughout the hospital. Our NADIA data showed that we had really high insulin error rates, both prescription error rates and administration error rates. And our patients in our patient experience questionnaires were saying that really they had very little confidence in the teams that were managing them and knew about their diabetes. So around that time, very fortuitously, the CCG were asking for sequin ideas. And we put in a bid to actually get a two-year sequin payment, for allowing us to expand our team and to actually change the whole way that we were working for patients with diabetes. And we were very successful and we actually managed to negotiate enough money to allow us to become very proactive in our approach. We were able to get enough consultant sessions between seven and ten consultant sessions a week, uh, including two sessions a weekend, as well as two diabetes inpatient specialist nurses providing around sort of 20 really sessions around the around the trust. So that meant at any one point, really, there was one consultant diabetologist and two specialist nurses going around the hospital seeing the patients. So that basically blanket covered everybody as much as we could see. On the weekends, we also have um, a, one specialist diabetes nurse coming in on a Saturday morning and on a Sunday morning, and a consultant diabetologist, if they happen to be on for general medicine, also cover that work. If they're not there for general medicine, then we cover them from home for any advice, or if they need to call us in, then we will come in. So that's the way that we've decided to work. And as part of that, we negotiated several targets with the CCG. We had all this resource, what were we going to deliver? And as on top of the standard care of going to see the patient and, and changing the management as required, we agreed that we would actually initially cover for the first quarter 60% of all the patients in the trust. Now, we're up to this moment about 620 beds. We were on, split on two sites initially, but now we've amalgamated, we're now 620 beds. And we had been seeing, about before the beginning of this, uh, less than 30% of patients. So they wanted us to see 60% of patients. Um, then we also agreed to see a proportion of the insulin-treated patients from quarter four onwards, but I'll talk about the renegotiation um, in the second year further down the line. They wanted us to decrease our insulin administration errors from 22% at the beginning down to 15% by quarter four, to decrease the number of patients who are on VRIs for an inappropriate length of time from 27% down to 14%. They also wanted us to implement the touch the toes test, and we, we wanted to do that initially on our highest risk area, the renal ward. So they wanted 90% of patients with diabetes on the renal ward to have had at least a touch the toast test on once. And they also wanted us to increase the proportion of patients who take an active part in their care from 40% up to 70%. This was on top of everything else that we were going to do. In addition, they also wanted us to monitor the length of stay. We were very careful not to actually sign ourselves up for a decreased length of stay because we weren't quite sure we were going to be able to deliver that meaningfully. They also, uh, we also agreed to carry out a root cause analysis um, together with the CCG diabetes lead for any patient who uh, had a length of stay over one standard deviation above the mean. So we did um, a random um, pick from all of those patients, sat down and looked at all their case notes. And the other thing we, we thought was very meaningful was to actually look at all the discharge summaries of every patient that had gone, that were generated by the di all the teams, surgeons, everyone else, and just see whether the diabetes-related information was correct. And if it wasn't, we would actually send a separate discharge summary saying, actually, the patient went on Nova Mix 30 or not on Humalog Mix 50, which is what the original summary said, to actually make sure that the correct information went out to, to the uh, primary care. So how did we know who was in the hospital and how did we cover all these patients? Well, the only way that I could see about doing it was to actually mandate 
um, this information coming through to us. So thankfully we had a, um, a piece of software on, um, where on admission the nurses request a bed. And what I did was to put a little bit of the pot of money into developing this piece of software so that in order for a bed to be given to a nurse to send a patient through to a ward, they had to fill in mandatory diabetes-related information. So I don't know if you can see, but in the middle there, they had to answer, has the patient got diabetes, yes or no? If they do have yes, then what, um, they also had mandatory, what is their capillary blood glucose? Whether they had diabetes or not, a capillary blood glucose needed to be done. And they actually made us find a knot of unrecognized diabetes out there. And they had to input the value. And if they did have diabetes, then we also had a few basic questions to allow us to triage a little bit the patients that we were seeing. Were they on insulin? Um, if they were on non-insulin injectables, what, were they on oral medications? Did they come in with a DKA, a diabetic foot problem, or a hypoglycemia? And on the back of that, that generated an Excel spreadsheet. And what we do is we look at that Excel spreadsheet at 8.30 in the morning and see which categories of patients have come in overnight. And again, at about 1 o'clock, and see who's come in through the morning and allow us to triage our work. It's very rough, and as you can probably imagine from just those questions, you can see a few people do need to see us, but don't necessarily tick the right boxes there. And the other thing that we found as we've gone along is that people write, tick no to diabetes when they blatantly have come in with DKA, which is a bit of an issue. But anyway, we, we've, we've needed to educate a lot as to the reason why we're asking these questions. And that's an ongoing piece of, piece of work with people at the front end. So what do we do when we see these patients? Well, as well as um, just delivering standard care, we, do what's, we deliver what's called the care bundle. And we assess them for their knowledge of their diabetes, their knowledge of their medication, and if we feel as if there's something lacking in that, then we deliver that there and then. We assess them for their need for structured education. So if they're a type one and they've not had Daphne, do they need to go? Do they want to go? We will refer them if they want to. Do they need psychological support? And again, we ask their permission, and if they want to and need it, we do a very rough and ready PHQ-4 questionnaire, if we can, and then we uh, send them on to either IAPT, if it's a more chronic problem, or our local RAID team in the hospital. And we also refer to smoking cessation services. In addition, of course, we look at their general glycemic control, and we go back again and review their diabetes care if we feel they need to. And when we see them, we put this little sticker in the notes to evidence that we've been there, so that if the CCG want to randomly pull patients' notes to evidence that we've been there, we stick this in. And it also acts as a communication tool with the uh, teams that are looking after the patient to see what they've done. And we will write, if we can't see the patient at that point, if they've gone to endoscopy, we'll come back. Um, and a little bit of a care plan at the bottom as to what we're about to do. So this serves as evidence that we've been... Once we've seen the patient, how do we communicate between each other? There's, obviously, we have a lot of resource, and we don't get to necessarily see each other from morning handover to afternoon handover. So this is what we use to actually input the data. This is our outpatient software, where, as you can probably see here, this is how we basically input all our data, and we've actually made an inpatient field. So when we go and see the patient, we will write on the text box, this is what we've done, um, but we also fill in the appropriate data for medication, for all the other bits, and people can access that both in our patients and within each other in the inpatient team. So this is our communication tool, and it also forms that diabetes-specific discharge summary once the patient's gone home. It generates a letter that can be posted out to the GPs. What do we do by the end of year one? Well, we managed to achieve all our targets and exceed some of them, and that actually gave us a little bit of a problem when we were renegotiating our targets um, from quarter four onwards. We achieved 75% coverage of all our patients with diabetes. We saw 86% of those that were admitted uh, having previously been on insulin, 100% of those that came in with DKA and HHS. 97% uh, of those with diabetic foot disease. We decreased our error rates down to uh, 9. We decreased our inappropriate length of insulin usage down to 5%. And we managed to um, have 96% of patients on the renal ward have a touch the toes test. Um, and the most difficult target of all we managed to achieve was that actually to increase the proportion of patients who take an active part in their care who felt satisfied with that particular measure. So then the CCG saw this and said, well, hey, you've exceeded all your targets. It must be easy. You've got all this resource. Um, increase your targets. And we were very, very careful to actually say, yes, we are, but we are working extremely hard to cover all this, these patients. What we don't want to do is increase coverage and, and sacrifice quality. So after a little bit of negotiation, they actually gave us 
these targets for quarter eight, and we're just about to finish quarter eight, and we're hoping that we're going to achieve all of these. Um, so we've kept the coverage to 75%, and we've agreed an 80% target for um, patients admitted with insulin. 100% um, coverage of DKA and HHS. You can never say I'm going to achieve 100% in anything, so I managed to get it down to 95%, but we are, I think, still hitting 100%. 95% of diabetic foot disease. We've agreed to keep our insulin error administration error rates to about 12%. Um, that's surprisingly hard. Um, and the, in the appropriately long length of VRI down to 5%. The touch the toes test we've agreed to expand. So we wanted to maintain our 90% uh, coverage on the renal ward, but we're now also hitting the acute wards and the care of the elderly wards, and we, need, we want to achieve 50% coverage there and to keep on the 70% taking active part in their care. So those are our quarter eight targets. Hopefully we'll see that we've got them. So where are we going next? Well, at the end of um, quarter eight, I think what we've, we've seen is that we are we're covering an awful lot of patients, but we're perhaps not necessarily being as focused and as in-depth as we would like to be. So what we want to do is have fewer repeat visits to some of these patients. Um, we're hopefully going to get connected glucose and ketone meters in the next few months, and that will allow us to risk stratify a little bit further. We want to do a little bit more about increasing education of um, the healthcare professionals, the, the other teams, really. We found that we've made a little bit of a rod for our own backs. People expect us to be there now all the time and have stopped thinking sometimes. And, you know, well, you'll come and sort out um, those sugars. So we want to make sure that people do not become de-skilled. In addition, we also want to upskill our, our diabetes inpatient specialist nurse according to their developmental needs. They've actually expressed the fact that they would like to do a little bit more with DKA and HHS patients. So they're going to um, uh, come round with us when we see those. And we're more formally going to rotate our outpatient and inpatient nurses so that our outpatient nurses are a little bit more comfortable in seeing the more complex inpatients. This is our team. Uh, this is DOT. Um, and this is us very proudly holding our award. Thank you very much. Thank you.